Hello and welcome back to Complex Analysis. And in today's part 31, we will continue our talk about the Identity Theorem. More precisely, I show you the applications of the theorem we have mentioned at the end of the last video. However, before we start with this, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady via PayPal or by other means. Moreover, you also already know, with the link in the description, you find the PDF version and the quiz for this video. Now, in the last video, we have proven the identity theorem, and in this video, I want to show you how we can use it. Therefore, first here, let's quickly recall the identity theorem, how we need it. So what we always need is an open domain in C, so a connected open set. And on this domain, we have defined two holomorphic functions f and g. Then we can look at the set of all points where both functions have the same value. And if this set has an accumulation point in D, we can conclude that both functions are actually the same. So the conclusion here is f is equal to g. So this is the identity theorem as we have proven it in the last video. Okay, with this I would say we are ready to look at an example. And this will be the cosine function. So first I want to consider it as an ordinary real function. So it's defined on the real number line with values in the reals as well. And for example we could define it as a power series. Indeed this would be the common way in analysis. Moreover it's a power series you really should remember. The coefficient here is given by minus 1 to the power k divided by 2k factorial. And it's important to remember that we only have the even powers of x. And with this we get a well-defined c infinity function on r. However, now let's consider a holomorphic function g defined on an open domain d. Where in addition we also have that d has real numbers. So the intersection with the real number line should be non-empty. Of course, this is needed if we want to extend the cosine function to the domain d. Moreover, this now also means that the function g here, restricted to this intersection, should coincide with the cosine function. For example, the restriction we could write like this, and this equality just means that g and cosine coincide on this set here. Moreover, since we know that D is an open set, we also know that this intersection here has accumulation points in D as well. In other words, the premise here is obviously fulfilled. Therefore, we can conclude that the function G can also be represented by this power series here. So there you see, this is the application of the identity theorem. So the conclusion here is, if you want to extend the cosine function from the real number line to a holomorphic function in the complex realm, we have to use the same power series. So you see, there is no choice at all for this extension if we want a holomorphic function. In particular here, we can extend the cosine function to the whole complex plane in a unique way. So you see, this is indeed an important result for us that comes immediately from the identity theorem. And now you might already see, of course we can generalize this example easily. So we start with any real function here and then we want to extend it to a holomorphic function defined on C. Therefore it's worth it to write it down as a general formulation. So let's start with a C infinity function on R called F. There, please recall, we already know that holomorphic functions are C-infinity functions. Therefore, we really have to start with a C-infinity function on R as well. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible to extend it to a holomorphic function defined on C. And in addition, as before, we choose an open domain, so a connected set in C. Moreover, we also already know that this D should have an intersection with the real number line because only then it makes sense to extend the function f to a bigger domain. Okay, and now we can write down the same conclusion as before for the cosine function. More precisely, it means there is at most one holomorphic function we can call g again, and g should be defined on the open domain d, 
with the property that g restricted to the intersection is the same as f restricted to the intersection. In other words, if you find a holomorphic extension of the function f for the domain d, you know it's the only one, it's unique. So for example, as before, if we have a power series in R for f, we have the same power series for g in c. Simply because the power series is always a holomorphic extension and now we know it's the only possible one. And there you see, this is an important fact because a lot of important functions in R are given as power series. And now you can remember, this all follows from our nice identity theorem. Okay, so this closes this chapter here and in the following videos we go into the direction of the important residue theorem. In the end, this will help us to calculate complicated integrals. Therefore, I really hope that I see you in the next videos and have a nice day. Bye.